it's really being more mindful about yep. what we're putting in our bodies and making better choices at every turn. And mm-hmm. those accumulate. They Just do. like bad choices accumulate. Absolutely. Yeah. Stand up for what is right, even if you stand alone. Damn, ooh, don't they know that's hard? Ooh, yeah, true. <laughs> stand up for truth, regardless of who steps on it. Oh, mm. Susie Kasem. Damn, that's not easy, right? No, definitely not easy. No, it's not easy. It's a little easier after you talk to Gretchen Carlson, but <laughs> damn, it's still going to be hard. But uh, welcome back to the show, everyone. Hello to our Heel Squad out there. Thank you for being a part of our our little family here. If you haven't joined our Patreon, guys, this is the last time I'm going to tell you. (laughs) That's a fib. But honestly, it really is a a great investment in yourself. Um, Our healing workshops, the ad-free content, the extra content is sure to help you along in your life in an even bigger way. Of course, it's our exclusive um, content. So we hope you'll join us over there. Just click the link tree in the Better Together with Maria Instagram account or my Instagram account at Maria Menunos, um, and join us there at any level. Of course, for we you also... listeners who are hesitant about Patreon, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I hear about these Patreon shows, and I'm a podcaster who thinks, like, eh, I don't have time. I don't want to spend that money. I can tell you, and this isn't just my biased opinion, our Patreon mm-hmm. is amazing. Mm-hmm. Here's what I would urge. Give it one month. Try our Patreon for one month. Hit that $10 tier and listen to some of these shows. Mm -hmm. Just try it. I know you're hearing about Patreon every day. Just give it one month and I promise you, you're going to start listening to these shows. You'll have so many breakthroughs and realize that our Patreon experience is to me an essential part of really getting everything out of you can't, everything that you can out of this show. So give it a try. Give it a try. If you're listening, you hear us every day. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Amen, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Also, our mailing list. Come join us at mariamenunos.com on our mailing list. It'll pop right up. You put your email in, and we're going to continue with our newsletters. We're going to be sharing our favorite beauty products, skin products, hair products, all of that good stuff there. So join us um, there. In the meantime, we're going to be talking about our takeaways Mm -hmm. from the week. And I have to say, I was really, really inspired by both ladies this week. Me too. We'll start with Dr. Christy Funk, who I love, who probably, I mean, man, her vocabulary is just so impressive. Right? (laughs) The IGF receptor and the, you know, you're like, whoa, how do you keep it all straight? Jeff was like blown away. (laughs) Yeah, right. But I instantly ended that show and went and looked up non-GMO organic milk uh soy milk Mm -hmm. and then i contacted uh the caretaker for my mom and said we're switching over to soy milk immediately for her smoothies and i'm also going to give them the recipe for the smoothie that dr funk um is demoing for us in the patreon by the way Mm -hmm. another reason why you should join patreon she is demoing this cancer fighting um smoothie and a really delicious mocktail which we love yeah we love it and so i feel like um i instantly was going into action on that and now I really am gonna think twice before i have dairy i'm not saying that i'm fully cutting it out Mm-hmm. Because I do love my pizza, but I am going to lessen it in a major, major yeah. way, especially knowing, you know, when you see that there are these kind of puppeteers behind the scenes that are just manipulating us, mm-hmm. you're like, no, I'm not that dumb, actually. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. I and mean, I kind of start- was. I didn't know better before, but now I know now better, you do. So I'm going to do better. And I like that what you just said, Maria, too. It's not, you don't have to cut it out cold turkey. I mean... For people who are cheese lovers, that's mm-hmm. going to be really, really hard. But try. Be mindful about mm-hmm. it. If you're drinking three cups of milk a day, maybe let's cut it to one. I mean, yeah. I was even <laughs> talking to my dad last night who is just like, no. Not going to have it? Not going to have it. But I did get, get him to stop and listen for a second because I was like, dad, listen. First of all, you've had cancer. So, hi. You should be hyper aware of this. Yeah. Second of all... Just cut, like, cut your consumption in half. Yeah. I'm not telling you to cut it out. You can still have it with your cereal, but maybe let's use some oat milk in your latte. Like, it's still delicious. That was a cool point, too, Jeff. I'm glad you asked that question 
because I was on the same wavelength as Maria. Yeah, I'm I didn't still think not, oat milk was good. I'm still not going to have it. It's too no, high in sugar. No, no, no. I'm not going to have it either. I'm going to soy. But yeah. for these people who are trying to transition, yeah. like my father, oat milk, great option. Great option. So you don't yeah. have to cut it out well, altogether. We should tell everybody about the dairy-free cheese that you exposed yeah. me to because I've been making mm-hmm. quesadillas while I've been here in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I use the mixed cheese bag that everybody uses. It's got like sharp cheddar, mozzarella, right. whatever. But I made one with Kelsey's cheese. Didn't know this the difference. And P.S. If you what? add like the hot sauce and the jalapenos exactly. and the red onion or whatever in there, if you add stuff too, then you really don't taste the difference. But I had one plain and I liked it. I thought it was really good. I didn't notice much of a difference at all. And the pizza too. Oh, the cauliflower pizza is good. And that's the dairy-free cheese too. Dairy-free it's cheese. Daya. Daya. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the cheese too, mm-hmm. right? So yep. the so the Daya cheese shredded comes in a bag mm-hmm. and that's what I use in the quesadilla. And then the um, Daya cauliflower pizza. Now, yes, it's not like that gooey, cheesy pizza we're used to. Right. But- when you have pizza cravings like I do, it really did smell so beautiful in the kitchen that night. Kelsey surprised me and was making one while I was on a conference call. And then and being a good wifey. She was a good wife. And then what was amazing was I love crunchiness. So the texture of the pizza is really crunchy and you kind of yeah. get your fill. It's almost like what she was saying, like, you don't need to drink alcohol to feel like you're drinking alcohol, like you can have a mocktail if it looks cute, you're going to feel like you're included. I know a lot of people want to dissolve their problems away and mommy juice is really important (laughs) or, you know, whatever it is, COVID juice, mommy juice, life juice. But I've never been really a drinker. I do drink, but I'm not like, it's not something I... I, My parents weren't drinkers. Right. So it was kind of like not in our thing. Cheese has never been my thing outside of potato skins and pizza <laughs> and a cheeseburger. Like I'd always That's have That's true. You don't really have it that much. No. I've recently become into making cheese boards because they're cute and they just, you know, especially in COVID, entertaining at least to, to pretend I was entertaining was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. But if you, if you notice me, I don't really eat a lot of the cheese. Mm-hmm. So... I'm okay with omitting cheese as much as possible, but what I have to now start forcing is the substitutes. Yep. And the the substitute, I even stopped using as much feta. You, look, I don't really put it in my salads. No, you don't. I did yesterday. Yeah. Um, You're right. Was it yesterday? Another day I did it. Yeah, but Tuesday maybe. I've kind of, yeah. So I'm going to start using the Daya cheese, the Daya that. shredded cheese instead. Um, and maybe I'll do that in more things. I love that. And I'm also looking up this other alternative right now that I love. I haven't had cheese since like high school because I had a doctor tell me I was actually pretty allergic, right? So I was like, all right, whatever, cut it out. So I texted Jeff this yesterday. I said, Chris, you'd be proud of me. I'm way ahead of the trend. But (laughs) (laughs) um, yeah, so I've been looking for cheese alternatives for a minute. And this one, it's Mykonos or Mikos. Mikos. They have a really great, it's cashew-based but I love their stuff. They have good cream cheeses. Wait, so and... Mikos is dairy-free? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've seen it in the market all the time. Yeah. I didn't know it was. Yeah, and we got some butter, I think, the other day that was Mikos. So it must be ghee or... But so these alternatives are out here and are out there and they do taste really good. Like I know. The thing good. is, though, when you're at the supermarket, you know you're already spending a ton of money. Yeah. You just go for try it and test it. It's hard to yeah, like venture cool. out. But I'm telling you, just trust me. Yeah. If you want to make the jump... Okay, whatever jump you're going to make, there's going to be a concession. It's not going to be exactly like what you had before, obviously, right? Yeah. But like I switched over to dark chocolate. In the beginning, I was like, Ugh, and then it's an acquired taste. Now I love dark uh-huh. chocolate. I can't imagine going back the other way Me because either. I know the nutritional benefits of dark chocolate. So when I need something sweet, like last mm-hmm. night, I was like, you know, I have a little dark chocolate totally happy. Yep. Didn't inflame me at all. I wasn't getting that inflammation re- response that I get when I have sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, and that diet cheese is really good. Yeah. So, so get what on that is diet. vegan cheese? Like how do you, is it nuts? Yeah. Either. Well, I know the Mikos is cashew based. I think the diet is either coconut or almond. I think it's almond, but oftentimes, yeah, it's nuts. So Try it, Jeff. Report okay. back to us. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't taste well, like do cheese, love, but it will. Um, cauliflower pizza. It's funny, just for taste. I've got some stuff with gluten. 
I'm yeah. like so stubborn about it. And Laura's like always trying to push gluten away from me because my dad's celiac. Mm -hmm. um, but I love, I just love it. But converting to cauliflower pizza crust, it's actually delicious. It's yeah. very crispy. Um, so yeah. Kels, I will try it. Well, you don't want to get, here's the thing, Jeff. If you know you have a gluten thing and you know celiac's a thing in your family, I'm not sure if celiac is like a genetic thing or anything. Can be. Yeah. So it's like, come on now. Like, come on now. We Jeff. need to like, right? Like my dad's diabetic. Everyone in my family's diabetic. I have to be super careful. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I don't cheat here and there, but I'm primarily watching it because I don't want to fall into that knowing that I'm susceptible. Totally. So you got to... Because then you can never have it. That's when you're really screwed, right? Like you can never have it. So right now, you can dabble a smidge, right? Exactly. That's why I'm holding out. But I do think I it's something I know that I have in my life that I haven't really dove into. Maybe because of denial. Maybe because I just don't want to open that door. But the older, that's what it is. The older I'm getting as I approach my 30s, oh, I just yeah. can't really play anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like in my early 20s, I would feel bad, but like you bounce back quicker. Oh, <laughs> totally. It's just not the same anymore. So I know I have to. Yeah. And it's funny. We talk all the time on this show about how your loved ones can tell you something and you're like, nah, but then like when other people do. So when Kelsey and like, you know, my very intelligent boss are calling me out. I'm like, they're probably right. Even though Laura's been telling me this for years, I need to get it looked at. Oh, yeah. Kevin gets so mad when I have to learn the lessons from someone else. But I'll tell you, yeah. even when we did the Bachelor viewing party last week, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm going to have a glass of wine. And it's organic wine. So the sulfite, it's less sulfites. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not going to bother me like regular wine because I, I had to cut wine out. I realized it was really affecting my breathing. Um, to the point where I was suffering and thinking I was dying. It was pretty extreme, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> no horrible. joke. Had no idea. I was like, oh, it's my <laughs> asthma. No, it's the wine, yo. It's the wine. Oof. So I was having it. And you know what? After I did have a little stuffiness and it just, it wasn't necessary. No, it's not. Like, it's just not necessary. So, um, and if you're somebody that just needs to kind of numb out a little, maybe have some CBD water. But honestly, right? Honestly, that's what I've been doing because I can't have my alcohol, but I feel good. And I've been having, if I want something, it's like a little CBD water okay. or something. And I'm not mad at it. And Maria Jeff has been very kind. She's not drinking. Well, sometimes she's like, oh, I won't have it. I'll have a mocktail with you or I'll well, have this with you. Yeah. When she looks like she's going to cheat, I'm like, I will <laughs> not drink in solidarity. It's very kind of her. Like, because like we were going somewhere. We were at the farm last week and she's yeah. like, I want a pumpkin beer because I was, we were all talking about pumpkin beers and I was like, okay, I won't have one either. You just, you can't do it. It was nice. Apparently. Alisa VT is working too hard and your other doctor. And Dr. Frank Lippmann. They're all working love. too hard yeah. and you the most are working too hard because yeah. you're abiding by the diet to heal your gut so much. I'm like, I just won't let her do it. But the CBD, the That's CBD, it. I love it. It's yeah. great. So the dairy thing is real. I mean, when we get pizza, we're always like, can we get a little extra cheese? Yeah. And <laughs> when, I get, out. <laughs> when I get my potato skins, I'm always like, a little extra cheese, a little extra bacon. And then every skim. <laughs> well, and then every time they come, Maria's like, dang it, I got to stop doing this because they really don't know what little means. Yeah. <laughs> and they go whirl overboard and then it's She's like, that's too much cheese for me. Yeah. I've never been the person that can just eat cheese plain either. Oh, oh my uh -uh. God. I don't know how people do it. It's not not my thing. But um, I'm going to really, you know, it, I did an interview with um, Alicia Silverstone years ago when she mm. wrote her vegan cookbook. And mm. she said, she talked about aspiring vegetarians. She said, you don't have to go cold turkey. You can be an aspiring vegetarian. And I'll never forget that really connected with me because she talked about how much it takes to produce like one piece of steak that you're going to have mm -hmm. and how much water is wasted and how much mm -hmm. this and that. And so even cutting your meat consumption by one steak a week or whatever it is, you make a huge difference on the environment and on your own body. And so, um, yeah, I also, I feel like I, like yesterday I was really focusing on having lots of fruits and, um, so I cut up an apple, I saw a that. big bowl of blueberries. Yeah. I normally wouldn't eat that much, but I started to realize, okay, I need to be consuming more of these healthy 
vitamin and mineral mm-hmm. rich foods so that I'm not hungry and craving the junk. And I did. I had such a good eating day. I had like a soup for dinner and it really made a big difference. So it's true. It's true. And, and yeah, you just don't, you don't have to, people, I think the issue is people are always like, oh, I can't do it. I can't like just cut it all out. Be an aspiring vegetarian, mm-hmm. be an aspiring less cheese lover (laughs) i don't know but you know it's just it's small tweaks and not even just about food and everything we're learning all of this knowledge that we're Mm -hmm. learning every single day it's the small tweaks it's the five minutes extra you're waking up early so that you can have that me time right it's not like hey go meditate for an hour every day like that's yeah and try to levitate (laughs) right seriously it's not gonna work well it's like it's not like i'm never gonna have doritos again in my life or it's not like i'm never going to have a cheeseburger again or well maybe i could that i could do doritos really i could say goodbye to doritos Doritos. um but uh i feel like it's really being more mindful about what we're putting in our bodies and making better choices at every turn Mm -hmm. and those accumulate they Just do. like bad choices accumulate. Absolutely. Yeah. So I am the one story. I've implemented from this show that's been a genuine game changer for me is 16 ounces of water with Himalayan salt and lemon before I have coffee. Yes. And that's yes. from Alyssa Goodman. And it's easy. And you, I just chug it. I just put it in a bottle of water and just throw it back before I have coffee. <laughs> and it's fun. It's like a challenge. I'm like, okay, I'm starting my day. I can't mm-hmm. do anything until I have this water. And what's so great about it is I've noticed a difference. I have more energy. But it also gets your water goal started because, you yeah. know, you're trying to have eight glasses a day. Mm-hmm. So if you start with that and you already have like two glasses down, you're like a quarter of the way there. So that's an easy one for our listeners. Give it a try. I love it. Mm-hmm. How many ounces is in this thing? You kill 30, 30 ounces. How many ounces of water are we supposed to have a day? Technically half of your body weight. What? That's like, I mean, if you really, I know if you're really trying to be like a water, like have a lot of water i'm supposed to have 95 pounds of water a day not pounds ounces so whatever your weight is so what am i i'm probably (laughs) haven't weighed myself (laughs) no jeff (laughs) weighed myself in so long so say like 135 sure so i'm supposed to like 70 ish ounces of water ounces ounces and how much was it 30 so you drink like two of these two and a half of those well, I definitely fill this up like four times yeah, a day. Yeah, so that's great. Am I going to drown? No. Am I drinking too no. much? No. <laughs> one time I did think I was doing that because in college I was drinking like one of those per class and I was like, water poison's a thing. So I mm-hmm. really it chilled is. out. It is. I chilled out. But, but these things have made a big difference. So this mm-hmm. is Kelsey, by the way, impacting me. I'm my guest, Kelsey. No, but this <laughs> flask, I've had so many of these sent to me and I've given them all away because I was like, I don't know what to do with this thing. And now it's been so great because we have well water here. So I just fill it up every day. Yeah. And I'm constantly carrying it around wherever I am. I'm constantly, I take it to restaurants with me. First of all, that means you don't have to pay for an extra bottle of water. Exactly. Boom. That's like $4 off your bill probably. Mm -hmm. Um, And now you're not having bottled water, which could have been sitting in the sun and melting in there. And Mm -hmm. that also creates breast cancer, by by the way. Um, and hurting the environment and hurting the environment and so this thing has become my new best friend yes you're also is that a hydro a... flask yeah mm-hmm. oh you're such a visco girl maria that's awesome what's a, a visco what? girl a visco girl a vsco girl what's that's that? like all the cool it's like the next generation of millennials they love their oversized teas and their hydro flasks. no i know that i'm cool because of this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i know the generate young generation thinks these are cool but what's visco yeah i don't know Okay, so we probably need to do a whole show on Visco Girls because it's all very confusing to me. But Visco Girls are kind of like the new Valley Girl. So it's like the... Or, and it's not a bad thing. I know it sounds like a bad thing when I say it that like way. Valley Girl, Visco Girls. Exactly. Girl. Okay. Um, but Visco Girls are like... They're very nice, actually. Like, that's what's cool is the Wait, new is generation. Wait, is Kelsey a Valley Girl? Am I... Is that why Kelsey speaks like that? Is she a Valley Girl? Is that Valley can I Girl tell you, speak? Can I tell you guys a fun story? In yes. fifth grade, I won class president by giving my speech talking like a valley girl but is that the valley girl (laughs) accent that you have i don't even realize is that Uh, it i don't know do i have an accent (laughs) maria thinks i have an accent uh i don't know i just want to say i know that's my alexis that's my schitt's creek i just want to say i just want to tell you guys that i really love my hydro flask (laughs) it's amazing kelsey that's you it's my alexis but is that valley girl i don't even remember that's alexis I'm telling you. 
Okay, but both of them because Kels is West Coast. I think a lot of West Coast girls are that way. Mm. It's not bad. It's just it's pleasant. It's bubbly. But yes, I think that's I think that's kind of. <laughs> I think like, she's. Cut it. I think no, I'm not. I'm just saying. Like I never thought about that Probably. it could be Valley Girl until just the second. It's like yeah, very yeah. animated. That's yeah. why your yeah, yeah, yeah. your your kids show your Nickelodeon show would have worked. Like, hi, it's me, yeah, Kelsey. They, they messed up. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious that's it so i'm a valley girl and maria's a visco girl i'm a boston girl i potty had she um, that's hard. my accent potty had but okay jeff back to whatever you were saying because now i've totally lost my visco train of thought girl. visco girls yes so i'm gonna read this comes from wikipedia oh, a visco God. Girl <laughs> is someone who participates in youth subculture it emerged in the in late 2019 so it's pretty new oh yeah named after the visco photography app which is like oh. a photo editing kind of face tune app i was app. wondering about that that's funny oh my gosh jeff our intern's texting me i love that jeff is talking about visco <laughs> I'm, I'm hip. Jeff is <laughs> hip. Oh my God, Jeff, you didn't just do that. I was going to say. I'm hip. Maria. No one who's ever done that has ever been hip before. So I just undid everything by saying it that way. Oh my God. Um, but they wear oversized yeah. t-shirts. They love a scrunchie. They love a hydro flask. Um, friendship, friendship bracelets. So it's very pro-female, which I like. Birkenstocks, sh- Birkenstocks shell necklaces, and sea turtle conservation is a huge part of being a visco girl. So Maria, you've got some of that. You're very pro female and you're very pro uh, animals. saving the animals. P.S. I used to make friendship bracelets. There you go. <laughs> Basically, you are a visco mm-hmm. girl. I used to make them for everybody. If you, anybody wants one, I could re I could re. Um, I want one. Power up my powers. Did you? I used to put mine on a clipboard and like do it. How'd you do it? Uh, I used to tape it. To like a desk and can we make each other friendship bracelets? We can make friendship bracelets. Cool. Yeah. DM us if you want one, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in the we'll, we'll be in the laboratory know. for hours. In the comments, is Maria a Visco girl? The other thing is they say <laughs> Oh, what? you sent me that video. It's a it's a weird video. I don't it's I don't like, know. You know how is people, that how people shut you up? Well? The the way they oh. laugh is by going <laughs> And what is that spelled like? S K S K S K. Stop it! <laughs> no way. Yeah. So it's Jeff, Anna, oops, k- 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 <laughs> Oh my god. Jeff, how do you know? Like, where did you learn this? Yeah, Jeff, this is kind of impressive. Honestly, no. I I don't ne- necessarily know. Someone, an after buzzer, was talking about Visco girls, and then John Mulaney, who's a comic I love, right. was talking about. It. Someone accused him of having Visco girl tendencies, Dead. and he dove down the rabbit hole. So we need John I think, Mulaney. He's so. Funny. I, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Is Maria a Visco girl, and should we embrace Visco girl culture or not? Very oh important question. Wow, I oh, think this is the only thing I thought during that entire conversation. We need to get Maria a better together sticker for her hydro flask because i know that's cool (laughs) this is true we need to oh you know my friend rita personalizes these kinds of things oh so we could ask her to make one for me yes please um so funny okay gretchen take away because we only have a few minutes left gretchen um she made me cry i have to say what she when she said when i asked her what was your biggest victory i thought she was gonna say like taking down roger ailes or the movie or even though she had no part in the movie um you know, you just kind of wonder. And then when she said her kids, I'm like, okay, she's going to have the, you know, her kids. But when she told the story and it was what it was about her kids. And if you haven't listened to the episode yet, it's incredible. I was like, whoa. And of course, tears were streaming. It was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I also loved hearing, um, you know, because sometimes you think you know everything and we saw the movie and all of that. And I just know there's so much more behind it. I so I, when I asked her um, if her NDA, if she was unmuzzled, would there be another bombshell? Mm. And Chills. she was like, Believable. yeah. Chills. The big thing for me that I had never really considered is so often we hear about settlements and this is the, the reaction I'm ashamed I've had in the past is like, oh, good for them. Like, at least they're getting something that they deserve. Mm. But the amazing point that she brought up that almost, like, candidly made me emotional on air was that um, women don't want money. They don't. Sorry. That's not the answer. What they want is um, to work. Mm-hmm, like, yeah. And, like, the fact that we've created a work culture where all women want to do is their jobs well, 
but some predator has put them in a position where the only alternative is to end their career and take money instead. Mm -hmm. That's not the goal. That's not justice. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's perpetuating the system. So that like kind of blew my mind. It was such an astutely brought up point on the show. Well, I also love when she said, most of the time we just want to work and we want an apology. And I've been there and I'm like, I've demanded my apology. I got it. Did you really? Oh, hell yeah. That's awesome. Hell yeah. That's awesome. What does that look like for women who need that apology, Maria? Um, you, you demand it. I held a crystal. <laughs> no way. I was having like the call of my career and I was holding this big crystal. It was a purple heart crystal. And I was just mustering all the strength I had to have this conversation because I was unbelievably wronged. Mm-hmm. And I was going to, you know, the top, top person who I had a great relationship with and thought that top person would hear me and, um, and rectify things. And instead, they all want to cover up things. Yep. And I said, I, I, I want my apology. And um, I said it pretty sternly. That's amazing. And yeah. I mean, it's like, hard. like Gretchen said, though, I mean, me listening to you or listening to Gretchen, like it makes me emotional because courage is contagious. So even hearing you say that, I'm like, damn, yeah. you're giving so many women out there the courage to go stand up for themselves. Like it is. A, I was getting emotional, too, during the whole show because it's so deeply rooted in our society. All these problems like. It's so sick. Mm -hmm. It's so sick. And like you said, Jeff, I mean, we're kind of trained to think the the first layer is like, oh, good for them. They they came out. They spoke about it. Yeah. And then she talks about it didn't even skim the surface. Yeah. Like we have no idea. So, I mean, hearing your stories. I told you. I'll leave it on this note. The only times I got real respect was when I stood up for myself. And the biggest of the bullies... The nastiest of the nasty pulled me aside to commend me for standing up for myself. Mm -hmm. And so if you know you're talented and you know you're willing to work hard, don't be afraid Mm -hmm. because you will be okay. It's just they manipulate you and they beat you down enough where you just feel like you have no other option than to relent and um and there is another way it's just uh it's hard so i feel like i'm always trying to help everybody else find their power because i don't feel like i owned mine enough um and so i hope you guys muster up the strength to do it in the meantime thank you guys for being with us as always This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menounos or mariamenounos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.